Hey, good afternoon, good morning. When you have diabetes, you need to know whether you have diabetic retinopathy or not. But more importantly, you need to know what stage of diabetic retinopathy you have. And in this video, we're gonna open these three doors and determine which one you have. So hang on, we are starting right now. Hey there, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor. And today, as promised, we're gonna open these three doors and tell you the story of diabetic retinopathy. But first, as a reminder, the retina is the lining of the inside of the eyeball, and it is composed of millions of rods and cone receptor cells, and it functions like the film or the sensor of a camera. And in addition to that, it has a network of blood vessels that run through the retina that provide nutrients and oxygen to it. And so basically, diabetic retinopathy is when there's a disruption of the nutrients and oxygen supply to the retina, and that puts you at risk for vision loss. Okay, so now everyone with diabetes will have some amount of diabetic retinopathy. So let's take a look behind door number one of diabetic retinopathy. And we have diabetes with no retinopathy. So our retinal blood vessels, they have a cell associated with them called a parasite cell. And these cells have a critical job of preventing the retinal blood vessels from being too leaky and also from preventing the body from growing new blood vessels on the retina. So diabetes will cause this slow damage to the parasite cells around the blood vessels. And so diabetes without retinopathy is the stage where there's damage to these parasite cells, but there's not enough damage that there will be signs that your eye doctor can see when we look inside your eyes, and there will not be enough damage that it will cause any vision loss that you will perceive as symptoms. And so if you have diabetes, this is a stage that you wanna stay in. And the way you can help do that is try to keep your blood glucose levels in as tight a control as you can and to see your eye doctor every year to look for any signs of diabetic retinopathy developing. So let's look behind door number two. Behind door number two, we see non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So this is a stage where your eye doctor will start to see signs of damage to the retina due to diabetes and you may or may not have any visual symptoms associated with those signs. So some of the common signs that your eye doctors are gonna see are gonna include things like microaneurysms, which were basically just little balloons or out pockets of some of the blood vessels. We'll, we'll see something called venous beating, where some of the veins will look kind of sausage-like. You might also get leaking of these blood vessels, and these blood vessels can leak different types of things. So they could cause a leak of fluid, which will give you edema or swelling in the retina. They can cause a leak of blood, which will give you little hemorrhages, and we'll call them dot blot hemorrhages because they look like these blotchy dot blot hemorrhages. Or you can get leaking of fatty residue, which will leave these kind of well-defined yellow deposits called hard exudates. And you can also get areas of the nerves that are being starved for oxygen and are in a, what we call a hypoxic state, and they'll develop these white fluffy patches on the retina called cotton wool spots. And so depending on how many of these signs that you have and where they're located on the retina, we will categorize your non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy into three categories. They'll either be mild, moderate, or severe. And so those categories will help us determine how much risk you are at and how often you need to be seen by your eye doctor. Now, most of the time, if you have mild, moderate, or severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, there's no treatment needed except to monitor and try to control your blood sugar levels as tightly as you can and see your eye doctor regularly to make sure that there's not any progression from there. But the important thing for you to know is that there are often no symptoms. Your vision is often not affected and you won't have any symptoms of having these stages of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And so the only way to know if this is getting worse or changing or getting better is if you see your eye doctor on a regular basis so they can take a look at the retina and look for those changes. Now, a little side note, we used to refer to non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy as background diabetic retinopathy or pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. But those are a little bit older terms, but you may see them out there that you still use. So, okay, so you may have noticed that of these doors, one of these doors is not like the other. And so we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. But before we get there, if you've learned anything new in this yeah. video so far, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below so you can tell YouTube the value of this video. Okay, so what's the difference between the doors? The first two doors refer to stages of diabetic retinopathy where there's no treatment that's needed. And basically the only treatment is monitoring if it's getting worse and trying to control your blood sugar levels as best you can. Door number three, however, means you need treatment. So behind door number three is something called prol prol proliferative, proliferative, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. 
Now, if diabetes without retinopathy and non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy are basically a situation where things are in control on your retina, proliferative diabetic retinopathy, things are not in control. Things are out of control. So proliferative diabetic retinopathy is when the retina is so starved for nutrients and oxygen, it's sending out signals to the brain saying, if we don't do something soon, this tissue is going to start to die and we're going to start to lose our vision. We don't want that. And so the brain has a great idea. Well, you need more nutrients, you need more oxygen. We got an idea. We're going to grow some new blood vessels. And so the brain starts to grow new blood vessels in the retina. But the retina says, hey, hold on a bit. We're kind of special, we're kind of a big deal. The blood vessels in the retina are not the same as all the blood vessels in the rest of our body. We don't want your type of blood vessels. And the brain says, ah, oh, don't worry about that. We'll grow new blood vessels anyways. And so this process is called neovascularization. And so the body starts to grow new blood vessels, which sounds like a good idea, but kind of funny, it's not. The problem with these blood vessels is that they're very, very leaky. And so they will start to leak and they'll start to leak more fluid, more blood, more swelling, and that will put you at risk for vision loss. And in addition to that, these blood vessels will grow very quickly and in a vine-like structure, kind of like kudzu, and they will spread all around and they'll grab onto the other tissues and stretch it. And they can result in things like retinal detachments or a vitreous hemorrhage, which all can result in severe vision loss. So if you have proliferative diabetic retinopathy, you absolutely need to see a retinal specialist to have some type of intervention done to try to save your vision. And so these treatments can include things like some laser treatments uh, to the retina, as well as some injections of medications in the eye to try to stop that process of proliferation of these new blood vessels. So proliferative diabetic retinopathy is not a place you want to do. So you want to do everything you can not to get to the proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage. All right, so you may notice that there's another door here, and behind this door is a topic that you need to know about that's as important as proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So to learn a little bit more about that, you need to watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.